on the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown measures led to a worldwide closure of technical and vocational education and training institutions, threatening the continuity of skills development. It's estimated that nearly 70% of the world's learners are affected by school closures across education levels currently. But respondents to a survey jointly collected by UNESCO, the International Labour Organization and the World Bank reported that distance training has become the most common way of uh, imparting skills uh, with considerable difficulties. Well, prior to the current crisis, young people aged 15 to 24 were three times more likely than adults to be unemployed and often faced a prolonged school to work transition period. In post-COVID-19 societies, as young people are called upon to contribute to the recovery effort, they will need to be equipped with the skills to successfully manage evolving challenges and the resilience to adapt to future disruptions. Well, joining us to discuss uh, skills for a resilient youth in the era of COVID-19 and beyond is Tombra Mwaswagu. Thank you very much. Tomra is a resilience coach. Welcome to the show. If we were to begin uh, with, thank you very much. Uh, if we look back now to 1999, the General Assembly endorsed a recommendation made by the World Conference of Ministers Responsible for Youth that, uh, that the 12th of August be declared International Youth Day. And this year's theme uh, tagged youth engagement for global action. Do you see that? Do you believe that this has actually been achieved? Well, I think, thank you very much, first of all, for having me on the show. I'm really, really pleased to be here. Like you said, um, I'm a resilience coach and founder of um, Unscape.me. Um, I guess to answer your question, I think that more can be done. I think that the, the, there's a huge gap that has come as a result of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, what was already a strained situation in terms of knowledge acquisition skills for youths in Nigeria has now become a lot more exacerbated. So I think that... Um, there, there is so much that can be done and that the government can help um, support youths in, 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 in bridging the gap and getting the skills that they need. What would you describe, uh, Tom Brad, as the most important skill set, or if you like, uh, what set of skills should any youth begin to acquire in times like this? I think in times like this, what I would say is that you need to control what is within your sphere of influence, right? So people at the moment, obviously, that's... Um, um, education um, with school closures and everything like that, people need to think about what they can do to better themselves. There are so many opportunities out there. There are sort of online resources. There are online things that people can um, go on and uh, online and learn from. So I would say that I think some of the most important things is that when you control what is within your influence, you learn, you go online, you learn um, about different courses, you, um, you, and, and also the government can also help in the sense of ensuring that um, people who have disadvantages who are able to get access to, you know, equipment and kits that they need for the sort of blended learning that we're going to be seeing in the era of COVID-19 and beyond, they've got access to it. So it's skills like, one, being positive, two, um, extending yourself more than anything, extending yourself and seeing what you can do beyond what is immediately available to you. And then also um, um, thinking outside the box, creating your own economy in, in situations if you need to. So these are some of the things that I think that people can do. There's so many free resources online. The, the world, um, the word, the phrase, the world is um, a global village has come to light, particularly now more than ever in the era of COVID-19. So I think that people need to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there the learning tools that are freely available to bridge the gap. Um, employers also can, can, can step in um, to support in bridging those, this skills gap by, you know, taking on, you know, youth for um, work experiences, internship, apprenticeship programs. These are some of the things that um, will help um, bridge the gap. I wonder if we can talk about how early is too early or if that's even possible for uh, resistance building itself because i think that often when people and i'm speaking not from experience because i'm not a parent myself but if you're in the business of raising children <laughs> if you're in the business of raising children it could be it could be argued that parents raise children 
quite different from how they actually want them to go because obviously they're children so you take a lot of control over what they consume what they do for themselves how independent they are but then there's this expectation that you want a child that is independent that is confident that is strong but perhaps we don't always raise children to be that way i wanted to ask you uh, with that in mind why is resistance built resilience rather why is resilience building so important resilience building is everything I think that's the key thing. The fact that you are here, you're speaking to me, I'm speaking to you. It shows already that we were resistant, we were resilient even before we were born. We came into this world because we, we won the race in, 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 in essence, and that is why we're here. So if you think about children, I guess to answer your question, if you see, think about children, when, they are, um, when children are born, um, when they start to learn to walk and everything, everything is a demonstration of resilience. They, they start walking and, they, you know, they're a bit tentative on their feet. They fall down, but they get up again. That's, that's an innate skill in every human being. We are all resilient. And I think what happens is society and parents, and, and, and as you said, as people, children begin to grow, we almost um, coax them out of this skill that they have innately. You know, we tell them that it's okay, you, do, you know, it, you know that there's sort of different things that come into play. There's shame and all, sort of lot, lots of other aspects of it. So I, I, I guess to answer your question, it is ultimately important. Resilience is everything. It says about 70% of people in, in this world will have one traumatic experience or the other. So resilience is the thing that enables you stand up. It enables you to back by and Developing the inner strength. All right, uh, 70%, 70%. That's the estimate of students that have been affected by school closures world over. I mean, world over. That's quite a number and some precious time lost in training the mind for these learners. That's what we're talking about now. Yes, some is. catching up to do, Tombra. Can this time loss be recovered? What best to do for them? I, I, I totally, I, I think this is one that I relate to particularly because I also, I, I was once in Nigerian youth. So I understand the struggle of, you know, learning in Nigeria. I understand, you know, periods where we used to have acid strikes when you're learning, you know, um, on, on campus with candles. So I can totally re relate to that. Um, and I, but I think, I, I, as I said earlier, what is within your control is what you can control, what is within your sphere of influence. So I think it is um, important that... Um, um, youth, they take the power into their hands at the moment. I know it's incredibly difficult. I, and, and to be honest, I, I know that I'm speaking to somebody right now who is thinking, you know what, everything is gone. How am I going to recover this time? This is, this is oh, you know, how, how will this work out, particularly in the face of such uncertainty? Um, I think what is important to, to realize is that you have what it takes within you. You have what it takes within you to develop yourself independently as much as you can so that it puts you in the best position in the best positions for opportunity in opportunities in the future mm, good fantastic uh, when you talk uh, or let's talk a little bit about um on uh which you are the founder how did the vision come about so I have always, always, you know, demonstrated resilience in my life. So it's, it's actually on scale.me. And what it, me, what, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what it is, is an embodiment of resilience. It's, it's, it's saying that you've gone through a situation, but you bounce back stronger. You bounce back more committed. You bounce back more positive to, 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 to you know, get your higher self. So I guess to answer your question, I've, I've always demonstrated resilience all through my life. I, I, I remember times where, you know, I was coaching people um, throughout my life. You know, I have, I have, I've, I've been in project management. I've worked across different sectors, investment back in oil and gas, automotive space. So I think over the course of my life, I realized that even as part of my work and my professional endeavors and I was training people and so there was that critical thing that was missing in the mindset of people. If you have within your mindset, um, if you're defeated within your mindset, not knowing that you can overcome and you can come through, then you, you, you're, you're basically, you're, 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 you're defeated. Bad, actually. <laughs> exactly. You're leaving, you're walking cops. Exactly. Uh, that's the walking way to put it. I mean, that's, that, that, that's exactly the way to put right. it. So I, Tombra, I'm so sorry to have to interrupt you there. It is time for us to take a very short break. But when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Tombra on youth and, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. Please do stay with us.
back to the morning show here on Arise News. We are still joined by Tombra Mwasuago, who is here talking to us about youth skills and COVID-19. Tombra, I know that when we talk about the effects of the pandemic, the economic effects usually dominate the conversation. But I wanted to ask you about what you think the socioeconomic effects of the pandemic uh, had been on the country, on youth themselves. Yes, one is mental health. Um, it's taken a toll on mental health of youth in, in Nigeria and around the world in general. Um, I think as, as we, we are generally known as, um, you know, very, very happy people in Nigeria. Um, you know, we, we get a lot from interactions with one another. So as a result of the lockdown, it's been harder to do that. So um, I think one of the biggest, biggest impacts is in the area of health and mental, mental well-being. So that would be what I, um, that would be the key thing I'll flag. And, 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 and I think it's, some, it's something that is an area that is crying in for support generally. And I think the government needs to do a little bit more to support people so that they have mental health um, um, and help available when, when they need it. Aside what the government can do, uh, what does the individual particularly need to do to be sane, to keep sane, to remain sane within this uh, period? Many things. I, I think there are many things within our control. The first thing is staying positive. That that I cannot overemphasize that. I mean, you 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 get the you, the energy you put out is what comes back to you, essentially. So staying positive, staying in that frame of mind, understanding who you are, and divorcing yourself from the circumstances. Because a lot of times people don't divorce themselves from the circumstances. They think. This has happened to me and this is who I am and this is the end of me, who is me. But it's understanding that you have a plan, you have a purpose. Like I mentioned, you came into this world resilient. So you've got that innate capability to be resilient. So it's sitting down and understanding that just because you're in a particular place doesn't mean you have to stay there. So you need to do the work. You need to do the work to plan ahead, think about it, prepare yourself, you know, prepare yourself for any opportunities that come to you and then step into the them confidently um, um, and align yourself, essentially. It said that as a man thinks, uh, a writer once said, so he stroke she is. Your thoughts are the sum total of who you are. How can one begin to break free uh, from such thoughts and patterns that seem to inhibit, you know, a him or her, whoever they are, stopping them from achieving their, you know, purpose or objectives? Yeah, so I think there's a, there's a quote that I absolutely love by my Angelo, and it says that I can be changed by what happened to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. And I think that is the mindset someone who is resilient needs to adopt, um, understanding that you have the potential within you right now to come out stronger. So when you're thinking about not only coming out of the situation that you're in or the circumstances, but you envision yourself coming out even stronger, even better than you were. Then that generally, it, it's, it's so interesting because as human beings, we have a lot, we have lots of, you know, limiting beliefs that are based on falsehoods. So we have, we have in beliefs that, belief systems that are based on things that we perceive to be a reflection of who we really are. So if you can work on your belief system, if you can work on your mindset principle, if you can adopt some of these things where you're thinking positively, where you're working on yourself essentially, then, then the sky's your limits. You know, the world aligns with you. You know, the universe wants to help you, but you need to be in that frame of mind where you're helping yourself. So that is some of the things that I teach. I teach. I help people understand. I help people realize themselves. I help people master their minds and the way that they think and how they should be thinking, understanding what their belief systems are based on and, and, and challenging falsehoods within that and then helping them realign in their life, thinking, okay, you know what? This has happened to me. Where do I go from here? A lot of people, when they are faced with difficult circumstances, they don't think, where do I go? They just think, this is it. So that small change in being able to think, you know what, where can I go? What are the possibilities? What is, what, what can happen next for me from here? Some of the things that I teach, these are the core principles of resilient thinking. 
What happens when resilient thinking isn't enough? And I want to bring the example of the uh, A-level results happening in the UK this week. And I know that we're talking in Nigeria about Nigerian youths, but indeed there are many Nigerian youths in the UK who uh, have fallen victim to a system that has failed them once again. What I'm talking about is in order to get an entrance into universities in the United Kingdom, uh, traditionally you need a qualification called the advanced level the A-level. Thursday this week was the results day. This is a year unlike many other, unlike any other rather that many of us have ever lived through in the sense that national exams were cancelled in UK. So uh, what happened was the exam boards took predicted grades that were submitted by teachers of these students to come up with an algorithm that gave the students what they believed uh, their grades would be had they had the opportunity to sit that exams. Of course, there are many students who feel hard done by. And when you look at the research behind it, it, it leads you to believe that students from poorer backgrounds in the United Kingdom were more likely to receive grades that were far lower than they, than they were expecting. And when you come from a disadvantaged background in the United Kingdom and you have the belief that you want to be successful, you understand firstly that success doesn't happen by accident. It happens out of real life effort. You Usually through education, I'll go to school, I'll study hard, I'll sit my exams, I'll get great grades, I'll get into university, get a great job and improve my life. But this year, that power, that freedom was taken away from a lot of youths. So if you're talking about the power of resilient thinking in a situation so traumatic as that, what can these students do? What could they possibly think that would change the reality that they're currently living through this week? So that's a great question, and thank you for that. I, I guess to answer it, first of all, I would want to challenge your own, your, your, what you just said there. So you said that the children, in, um, students or youth in the UK, you know, around the whole A-level results, I'm, I'm completely aware of that. But I, I guess the thing that I would say is this is something that impacts everyone globally. So if I'm a youth in the UK and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, um, how am I going to come out of this? That um, um, I, I have been hard done by I think what I would do is to try to channel the thinking, try to help people see it from a different perspective. So first and foremost, you are not the only one in the situation, right? So once you do that, you're already starting to see things differently. First of all, you're not the only one in the situation. There are more than likely to be thousands and even millions of people across the world who have this same issue, who have this same issue, who you know, are, are going to be using predicted grades to, as entry and criteria for getting into schools. So I think it's important to think about perspective. It's important to then say, okay, so this is, is accepting your reality as well. So this has happened. What can I do? So that, those, are, those are the core principles of overcoming adversity. It's thinking ahead, looking at the, at the, at the future, where you're going to, thinking thoughts that keep, hope, keep you beyond, um, that help keep you beyond your adversity, and then striving for greater. So I'm, I'm an A-level A -level student in the UK, I've got predicted grade, and they're not great. What can I do? I'm going to be asking the question of myself. How can I put myself in a better, better state? And I think that there are things that everyone can do in Italy. Like I said earlier, you can develop your skills. There's, there's, there's so many things. You can look to get experience. You can work for free. You I'm can sure work for free. You're for talking free. about uh, one's ability to always talk to himself. Uh, Self-talk, that's what it is called. It's very important. I haven't heard you mention exercises, the, the importance of the place of exercises in this whole thing. But let me add this to it. Uh, when you talk about transformational secrets, what are they? How do you discover the secrets and how can they help in transforming the life of any youth or anyone for that matter? So that's a great question. I've got a free webinar actually coming up on the 23rd of August where anyone can come. And, and that's, that, that's going to be the subject of the webinar where I'm going to be teaching about some of the transformational secrets around that. But I guess the core pillars of the work that we do um, is, is around mastery. So self-mastery, self-mastery, thinking about you know your mind, how it works, understanding what your limits, your beliefs are based on what the, your limitations, the limitations in your mind um, is. Um, the, the second pillar is, you know, self-realignment. Okay, so now I know this is the situation and I've accepted it. Where can I go from here? What's my vision? What's my path to success? You know, once you're, you're looking ahead, you're less likely to be looking down. 
So uh, thinking about you know self uh, self um, realignment, and then the third pillar of the work that we do is is, is um, helping people realize themselves. What are the things that can trip you up? Now that you've got this plan, now that you've you've, you've picked out all the positives, you from the rubble, you've sifted through the rubble, you've picked out all the positives. This is what is within my power to do. Now that you've got that in your hands, how do I realize my higher self? How do I realize my purpose? How do I contribute to society purposefully so that I am still, you know, of value or I feel of value? So these, these are some of the things that um, we, we work with individuals to help them do. All right. Uh, let me add this one more. How, um, well, I'm trying to make sure that we're getting as much as possible because of time. <laughs> How do we deal, or youths particularly, because we're talking about youths, of course, it can, we, it, we can extend it, extrapolate it, you know, to every other person. How do we deal with the question of trust? You know, some people have deep scars that run so deep, so deep, that they find it hard to trust anyone and harder even to trust themselves. Uh, what's it been like dealing with such people? in your line? Yeah, I guess in my line, one of the core things that I say um, is you've got to let go of what does not serve you, right? So the fact that you're not trusting, you are, you know, thinking everyone's going to hurt you, you're not being positive, first of all. You're not being pos positive. You're not, you're not in a frame of mind to accept good things, right? So I think one of the key things that you need to do is you, you've got to work on yourself. It's what starts from within. I can only control what is within my sphere of influence to control. So I start from within. I think about it. Like, okay, the fact that I don't trust that anybody would help me or I've been so traumatized and that I can I amount to anything good. How does that thinking help me? Where does that thinking take me to? You can't answer. There is no positive answer for that, for that question. So these are some of the things that we need to let go of let go of that negative thinking, let go of the fact that, you know, you've been hurt and you've been traumatized. The truth is that these are unprecedented times. Everyone has been traumatized by, 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 by COVID-19 in one way or the other. We've experienced some of the most hardest times that we've, we've, we've ever seen. So from it's important. The weight, from the weight to move forward. Mm. Yes. Well, well Oh, thank you, indeed. Uh, Tom Brown, I wanted to ask you uh, about leadership itself and what role you think uh, resilience plays in lasting leadership and, of course, in building sustainable organizations. How important is it in that process? I think it's um, really, really important for it to, to have organizations that last. You have to have resilient leaders at the helm. That's it. It's, it's a statement of fact. Because if not, as we all know in life, so many un unforeseen circumstances come about. So if you don't have leaders who are forward thinkers, who understand the key principles of high performance, you know, understand it and leverage it to their advantage, then they, they, you, 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 you can't get organizations that last. So I guess to answer your question, it is critical, it is imperative that um, leaders or, or people in the helm of organization are thinking from a resilient standpoint. So what that means is, how do I bounce back when things don't go as planned? You're asking yourself that question every time you are putting the allowances that you need to put in so that you know you are able to get back up um, if, if, if there is a, a, a negative situation. All right, now, let me make this a yes or no question because, oh, well, uh, no, time, we sadly. Time. Thank you so much, Tom Brown, Resilience Coach. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much.